Today, you're joining me on my track day. It is five o'clock. I, I got up 30 minutes ago. I had my breakfast. I am, I am getting ready. The track is two and a half hours away. I want to get there at 7.30 for tech. We have a fun day of uh, driving at the track, and I'm very excited to be taking you alongside with me. away from the track what I usually do is I usually stop by uh, Wawa the free plug for Wawa to get some breakfast fill up and be ready to go the beauty of living in New Jersey they fill up the gas for you and since I'm gonna be at the track all day I usually have my breakfast in the parking lot unless I'm meeting some friends today I'm going along so uh, I'm gonna eat in the car super lonely I got my tea I got my breakfast hoagie and uh, get myself psyched maybe watch a couple of uh, car videos and then I get to the track Sign one of these things, get my wristband. It's gonna be such a crazy weekend, it's a Porsche race weekend, uh, and we're gonna get in between, we're gonna get the sessions in between. So there's gonna be a lot of race cars that we're gonna see. It's just gonna be awesome. Beautiful car, I love this. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, hey, man. You too. This place is so busy. It took me like 10 minutes to find a good parking spot. I finally parked. I'm gonna unpack and go to tech. So this is what it is. They usually check your wheels, uh, your form, and uh, you're usually good to go. Morning. Thank you, gentlemen. This is one of the most beautiful cars ever made, a 987 Spider. Insane. And it's a manual. Holy moly. Lovely. Just lovely. Anyway, uh, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Um, we're doing expansion tech. Uh, we're going to the track today. Yeah, we're going to the expanded passing today, correct? Does everybody understand expanded passing? Yep. Okay, we just finished orientation. Uh, I got to get ready now, put my long pants on and shoes because we're starting in 20 minutes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are lining up. This is the first run of the day. This group includes a lot of novice drivers, but also a lot of advanced drivers. The way this works today is, since there's a club racing, we have five sessions in between those club races where everyone who signed up for HPDE can, uh, can get in. Uh, but this means they had to mix all types of uh, skill levels. So on the track, you're gonna see uh, people of all skill levels and it's going to be quite interesting to navigate through them the track is going to be hot because it's super hot outside oh crap yeah i forgot to take this off now i know it's going to rob me of some power but i'm running ac on i'm going to put it on my feet only and i'm running my cooled seats and we're off all right First run of the day, first lap is a yellow flag lap, so no passing. We want to warm up the tires. Uh, there's a very intimidating lineup of cars in front of me, behind me. Behind me, I'm followed by uh, what appears to be, what is it, a 993 type of thing. In front of me, I got a GT3 RS, a 7 Cayman S, and a couple of race cars. So, I don't know how I'm gonna fit in, but let's see, we're gonna try our best. Yellow flag, once again, means caution. So we're gonna take it easy for the first lap, try to warm up the tires as much as we can. Oh, there we go, I can still feel the car slide. It's amazing what happens when the tires are cold versus when they warm up. You have so much more grip. And we get a first point by. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. First hot lap. Oh, uh, that was uh, me getting used to the brakes. Oh, 
yes. So the difference now between the last time I was here and uh, today is I'm a little chubbier probably. But other than that, the car should be the same. Oh no, the steering wheel. The steering wheel is new. We've upgraded the steering wheel and it obviously feels fantastic. Whoa. Oh yeah. This car sounds so good. So good. Ah, oh, the tires are warming up. They're still a bit cold, so they slide more than I'm um, used to. But give it another lap and they'll be fine. What I did yesterday with these track tires, I actually flipped them inside and out so I can get more life out of them. This is probably the last day I'm gonna be using them. And the next event, it's time to upgrade to a different tire. All right. There's a GT3 RS ahead of us. See what times we can accomplish today. There's a GT3 RS ahead of us. I am getting closer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. GT3 RS. That was some good point buys. The guy noticed right away that I was coming hot. And he noticed that point buy and he gave it to me rather quickly. So that's what you people have to do. When you're at the track, you don't want to slow down the person behind you. You want to give them a point buy as soon as you can. And if you notice with me, I didn't slow down my line at all. He actually moved over, which is not necessarily the, the best thing to do, but all right, let's see. Next lap, I think we can get a clean lap in, which means we can be smooth. Let's see how close we can get to the 135 that I want to get to. miles an hour braking oh yes I gotta start using the curbs a little more but this car feels so good to those of you who want to experience proper absolutely proper motorsport feeling you need to get yourself in a Porsche and really try it. Yes, I love the M3 because it's fast, but it's not as nimble as a mid-engine car. And that sound that's behind me, oh my God. And we cut up to a 718 GT4, which is a beautiful car, thank you. Obviously much more powerful than me, thank you. But it just goes to show you that an event like this and this is so much for me walking you, you through how to drive this course but at an event like this you can have a crazy fast car but it doesn't mean you're gonna be passing everybody this uh, driving uh, on, on the on the racetrack requires not only obviously a, a, a capable car but also driver skill and uh, also a lot of times People are just not willing to push themselves to uh, to certain limits. I was talking to a guy who said, the guy with the TT3 RS, G, uh, yeah, TTRS. He said, yeah, I usually drive eight tens, and that's that's totally respectable. I get it. I mean, you're doing 130 
miles an hour and you gotta slow down to about 70, that is nerve wracking. A lot of people just don't wanna take that chance, so they don't drive as fast. So, as much as it makes me happy that I passed a, a GT3 RS or that I pass all the fast cars, it's not necessarily driver skill, it's about what others are not willing to do. But I love this thing. I, yeah, 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 I missed this turn. I missed valuable time. Such clean laps here we can make, such clean laps. three in front of us. All right, got Mr. Thick Whip on my site. Target acquired. Let's go, Mr. Thick. Wow, your back is sliding there, buddy. What's up with that? Thank you. Thank you, buddy. I'm offline. Woo Sliding a little bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tires getting a little greasy there. A little sketchy. Oh, ho, ho. Seven one eight. Target acquired. All right, so we just got finished with session one. I just wanted to show you what the aftermath of such an event looks like. So these are the tires. Look how sticky they are. They heat up so well and um, I'm already wearing the outside. I have negative 2.2 camber in the front, uh, but it's still not enough. So eventually I'm gonna have to dial in more camber if this car ends up being my uh, dedicated track car. But uh, yeah, they're super, super sticky. They will not last me past today. Uh, let's see, I got hit with some tire chunks, that's to be expected. On this side, yeah, the sun can actually see, you can, you can see it better on this side. Super sticky, look, oh my God, it's crazy. Look what happens, you see, this is all tire material, just, just peeling off, but this also gives you grip. So, uh, 
and then you get these little chunks that are sticking to your wheel. Uh, the rotors look good, no cracks that are connecting them. There are some cracks, but no connecting cracks. Well, the rear tire, the rear tire, same thing. Let's see how the exhaust is looking. So this exhaust used to be that nice silver at the track. It gets burnt out, but what can you do? It is so hot outside. I'm gonna have to probably sit in the car. I did not rent a garage today because it's all taken by the race car teams. Uh, I have to either sit in here or go somewhere with an air conditioning and, uh, and wait until my next session. Session two completed. I gotta say it, it's so hot, so hot. Uh, the front left tire is taking a beating. Uh, so it's probably got, it's got two, maybe three sessions left in it and that's it. But check this out. Oh, look at all these chunks. Oh my gosh. Look at all these tire chunks, crazy. So these are the chunks that hit your paint and they leave these marks. Usually when you follow Corvettes, they have such wide tires. They spit a lot, a, lot, a lot of these things. But again, nothing to worry about because they come off easily. I've got about two hours to kill now. I'm gonna go have lunch, fill up, drink plenty of water, and strategize for the rest of the day. Oh, and two things I've gotta say. Number one, if you are doing any type of driving like this, high performing driving, driving education, get yourself an external GPS receiver or transmitter. It connects to your uh, cigarette lighter, so it powers it, but it links via Bluetooth with your phone. And uh, the app that I use, which is Race Chrono, automatically syncs with it. So as long as you connect it to Bluetooth, you should be, you'll be fine. And it's, seriously, it's, it's, I think it's uh, accurate to about six feet or so, whereas your phone's GPS is not very accurate, so, so, so your position on the map shows all over the place. I'm gonna link it for you in the description if you wanna get it. An absolute, absolute must, super easy to, uh, to install and pair with your phone. I chose to put it on my dash using this Velcro that comes off easily when I'm done, and, uh, and that's it. Oh, and this is how I mount my GoPros. So I've got this mount and uh, this mount. This, mount this, this one points straight, this one is more of an angle, so that's the one uh, that I use, and it's got that little uh, two-inch extension, and that's how you get the best footage. So this racetrack actually has an awesome pub and restaurant on premises, fantastic food. That's where I've been going uh, every time I come here, or for the last couple of times since I discovered it. Fantastic food. Next, we're gonna go get some gas, not at the track. It's cheaper when you go off the track. It's a 10 minute drive, but it's totally worth it. Get some ice cream and uh, be back at the track. So to start, start prepping, I gotta clean the windshield. Look, there's a huge tire chunk that I need to clean. And uh, in between sessions, I always clean the windshield just to make sure I have good visibility. I don't know about you, but I'm all about this Mickey Mouse ice cream. So good. And for dessert, after my dessert, we got this uh, Snickers ice cream. Mm. And we're back at the track. There's nothing else for me to do than just wait until it's time for us to go.
was getting very squirmy. Uh, look at this. Nice and even wear. There's a bit of a wear on the inside. What is this? Look at all the gunk. And we're done. I just finished session four and I packed up. For some reason, session four didn't record. But, oh my gosh, I'm so exhausted. There are five sessions, I just cannot do the fifth one. It's the end of the day. Uh, I'm, I've been, I made some mistakes in the last session, so I just want to call it quits. It's 105 degrees, it's just impossible. But, when I was packing up the car, I started thinking, check this out. How much more of a daily driver or a fun car do you need? Check this out. All the stuff that I brought with me, everything packed up inside. Uh, don't mind the cover, I, I left it in the garage. So look, I have my backpack, my jack, my helmet, everything fits in here. We're gonna have to do some cleanup when we get home. Inside, nothing inside, no clutter. But then in the back, check this out. Look, I got my toolbox, some clothes, some water and all the blankets and all that stuff. Everything fits. Now, what I'm gonna do next season, most likely, if I end up continuing to track this car, I'm gonna do a little trailer attachment so I can tow extra wheels and tires because it would be nice to have a set of dedicated slicks and I'm 150 miles away from the track. I just don't wanna drive on slicks. Anyways, this is really it. This is what you can expect when you go to these uh, high performance driving uh, education events. Usually there's a lot more hanging out with people, but it's just, it's so hot that you either sit in your car where, where there's AC or you go somewhere where there's air conditioning. It's just, it's close to impossible to hang out outside. But there's a lot of amazing cars. The race is, is happening or the practice rather is happening. And it's, uh, there's a lot of loud cars. Uh, there's a lot of camaraderie, camaraderie everyone's super friendly. You, no matter who you walk up to, you can you can talk cars and and they'll spend uh, a lot of time talking to you. And you you get to uh, learn a lot, and you get to learn uh, learn about you and in your car, and you get to improve your driving skills. So if you haven't signed up yet, try it. It's not uh it's not too too expensive. If you haven't done this yet, you can just bring a stock car, and you should be good to go. The only thing I recommend is uh, flushing your brake fluid. Other than that, it's all set. Anyways. Uh, let me know what you thought of this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.